revolutions, as Crane Britton wrote in his wonderful book, The Anatomy of Revolutions, is uh, is like an illness that it first goes through a raging fever where you see that period of extremism and uh, and and bloodiness, uh, and then it begins to move. Uh, too slowly often into the long convalescence, a fitful period where it goes through phases. And then the third is the return uh, gradually to normalcy. And I think that Iran is in many ways at a midlife crisis. Its revolutionaries are now in their late 50s, 60s, and 70s. The Supreme Leader turns 76 this month. The majority of the population today is under 35. Over half of the electorate today is under 35. And so there is a not just a generation gap, but there is a sense that uh, the younger generation doesn't share all the priorities of uh, that, that generation of radicals that ousted the Shah and ended a monarchy that had prevailed for 2,500 years. And there is a lot at stake. Uh, not just in the nuclear deal. The nuclear deal is a microcosm of the broader transition that Iran faces. Uh, whether it will finally go through it this time around, it's hard to tell, but it's clearly part of this process. It's also part of the election season. Iran goes to the polls next February to elect a new parliament as well as a new assembly of experts. And for a decade, the hardliners have had a lock on politics, all three branches. And that, that hold was only uh, begun to be broken with the election of President Rouhani in uh, 2013. Now you have a second branch of government that is up for grabs with parliament. And when I went to see the head of a nine-party coalition of hardline uh, groups in Tehran in May, um, he told me that if there is a deal, that that will be a boost of up to 25 percent of the voters for candidates who favor or are sympathetic to President Rouhani. And so there is a sense that the, that the nuclear deal um, will also determine what happens politically, not just whether President Rouhani will have some openings to engage in other reforms, but who actually is uh, holding parliament and is able to dominate the political space. And so for many of the hardliners, the nuclear deal is dangerous less for the terms of the deal itself than what it means for their own political future in Iran. And of course, they fear that President Rouhani is another uh, President Gorbachev, that his openings to the outside world or his domestic reforms in perestroika and glasnost are, the, are similar to what President Rouhani is trying to do now. And of course, Perestroika and Glasnost led to the unraveling of the Soviet Union. So there is that, um, again, this, this sense that this moment in history is not just about the nuclear deal, but about the fate of the revolution as that generation of revolutionaries begins to um, uh, enter their, the final phase of their, their role in Iran uh, and is replaced increasingly by a younger generation with a different agenda and who make up the voters, not just the kids, they're now part of the political process themselves. That's, that's fascinating. A friend of mine, Serene Jones, who's president of Union Theological College here mm -hmm. in New York, came back um, from a couple of weeks in Tehran recently in theological discourse with um, uh, representatives of a number of religious traditions uh, in um, Tehran. And her striking observation, as someone who's not been to Iran before but was with her dialogues with young people, about what a radically different mindset uh, she encountered about um, their interests and deep attachment to forms of American popular culture, uh, their, their desire to engage the world as, um, as, um, as any other citizen of any other country. 